I felt that vibe. I felt that felt that pressure. Um, I felt like for me personally, this was one of the biggest games of my career. Kobe's off-ball defense because we've seen it all before. Like, we've seen him play some bad off-ball defense, but we all know that, like, in the All-Star game, he locked up LeBron. We've seen him go to the first all-defensive team multiple years, but you just saw it. That Trevor was literally camping in the corner, a guy that he's played with for about three or four years, and he can't lock him down after that sick three-pointer that he made in the corner. I just don't understand what was up with him keep going away and trying to help and leaving him literally wide open four or five times in a row. Yeah, grand total of seven three-pointers. Charlie, thanks a lot for the phone call. Uh, wow, yeah, 9 of 15 for uh, Trevor Reza, 7 of 12. 7 of 12. I just can't believe I'm even speaking those words. But uh, that is exactly what Trevor Ariza had today with uh, 25 points off the bench. Um, no, not uh, not a good moment for Kobe Bryant. I mean, he had the, the offensive numbers were there with the exception of the six turnovers. But uh, defensively, uh, he, they needed him in that second half, and he was not able to provide uh, much, if uh, anything. 877-710-3776. 877-710-3776. Coming up, more reaction from the Lakers uh, losing to the Wizards 103-100. Welcome back. To another episode of Lake Show's Finest Redux. I'm your host, Charles Ryan. KB24 status, or yours truly, the biggest Lakers. 
fan in the world. Tonight, the Los Angeles Lakers are one step closer to capturing that elusive NBA title. You know, last podcast I said this doesn't feel like the finals, but this game it did. It did. It was a slugfest, back and forth, back and forth. Big plays. Everything was magnified. I mean, it just really felt like a playoff game because both teams really wanted it really bad. That's kind of obvious, but you could just tell, man, both teams put it all. Low-scoring game. Lakers just came out on top. Thank God. I'm going to run through the game quarter by quarter, my thoughts on, you know, big plays, stuff like that. A few disparities between, like, free throws and stuff like that early. Uh, One thing that I did like was that the refs were not Scott Foster. I think the lead ref was a guy named Zach Zarbra. I like him a lot. He's pretty fair. Meanwhile, last game it was Scott Foster, Tony Brothers, and another guy. Those two guys do not have a good rep at all. <laughs> okay, so quarter by quarter, let's start this thing off. KCP came out hot. I loved it. He was like three for three in the first few minutes. But the turnovers, man, we had way too many turnovers in the first quarter and first half. We had five turnovers in the first five minutes of the game. LeBron had five turnovers in the first half for him. Fortunately, he only had one turnover in the second half, which I loved. He really tightened it up. It's not sloppy with uh, uh, passes of the post to AD or whoever it was in the post. Um, So we tightened things up at the end. And in the beginning, you know, AD got off to a really slow start. Um, Ironically, LeBron and AD both made the same amount of shots. They were both 8 for 16. Um, But Bam really let AD know that he was there. And this wasn't going to be like Jay Crowder, Barbecue Chicken, Tyler Hero, Miles Leonard, de- Myers Leonard defense. And he let him know he was there. And one thing about Bam and Adebayo this game was he did not play well. I think he finished like 15 points. He only took eight shots. He was not aggressive. Um, he had three turnovers. He played a lot of minutes for a game back. He played about 33, 34 minutes. <laughs> but defensively, he was fine. And he let AD know he was there early, but then AD made up for it in the second half for sure. And then Bam also got in foul trouble. He had four fouls, um, which is kind of reminiscent of the first game when Bam got in foul trouble. And then, unfortunately, he got hurt. Um, Danny Green made finally made a three in the first few minutes. I was really proud of him. Uh, you know, he had a couple threes this game. He had a couple layups. This one layup he had was when Ronda got offensive rebound. Danny got it uh, uh, back in the post. No, Ronda stole the ball on a rebound by the Heat. Danny got it back in the post. Nobody was in front of him. He turned around really, really slow like he was scared to turn around and face the basket for a layup. That was hilarious. I really thought that was hilarious. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. My favorite offensive play of the first half was the LeBron steal and dunk, and he dunked right over Tyler Hero, and Hero fell to the ground and flopped. That was great. Um, and my favorite defensive play was... Um, Davis, he altered uh, a fast break by Tyler Hero, and Tyler Hero completely blew this layup. Tyler Hero made a lot of crazy shots and a lot of silly, silly shots that were just unexplainable, but it, Davis didn't even touch Tyler Hero, and Tyler Hero like didn't even hit the rim on the layup, and then right after, Davis blocked Kelly Olynyk the next possession down, so that was great back-to-back defensive plays right there. Um... So, LeBron, he had five turnovers, turnovers in the first half, but he had three turnovers in the first quarter. Um, we had seven first quarter turnovers uh, total. And a lot of the trouble was getting the ball to AD in the post. You know, he'd be fronted by Jimmy Butler 
or even Bam Adebayo or Jake Crowder, and then when LeBron would throw it up in the air to him, uh, a Heat player would come on the backside and kind of contort his body a little bit, and Anthony Davis would jump, and it just wouldn't hit him, and he'd kind of just flail a little bit. But we had a lot of trouble getting to the ball into the post early to Anthony Davis, and we made up for that for sure in the end of the game. Um, you know, we chose not to use at the end of the fourth, first, at the end of the first quarter, we were up like twenty seven twenty, and then Jimmy Butler took a shot and made it a buzzer beater. And we had a foul to give, and for some reason, I don't know if the players weren't aware, but we did not do our foul to give. Could have easily done that. So the Lakers got to be aware of that, because that could be the difference in a game. And, you know, LeBron, one of the smartest players in the world ever, should be aware of that. That was really silly, I thought. Um, in the second quarter, I noticed both teams really passing up open layups, and some contested layups that could be fouls for open threes. And that was more of the Heat and Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson penetrating. I didn't understand that. We In the first few minutes of the second quarter, we allowed 11 straight points. And two, well, no, no. The, the Heat scored 11 points in the first two minutes, and we only scored two. It was an 11-2 run so early. That can't happen out of a quarter. Um, one thing I thought was great was Crusoe's technical foul. I thought that was hilarious. He was just freaking out. You know, he was clearly fouled going in for the layup. And I never really seen Caruso get technicals. And LeBron was right there to back it up, back him up. I love that. Um, but then at the final play of the first half, Caruso gets knocked down by Jimmy Butler, who basically did a handoff, you know, a handoff screen, but he turned his body way into Caruso. And Caruso kind of flopped a little bit. But he was kind of banged up there, and, uh, man, he was all over the ground. I was surprised he didn't get a second technical freaking out, to be honest, because I would be furious. Last play of the game, that stuff happens to me, getting a big Jimmy ass to my body. <laughs> um, we had three free throws in the first half. I think we were two for three. Made no sense to me. I don't know how that happens. Um, in the fir- third quarter, we were super sloppy. You know, we need to have this understanding that we are not going to go to Markeith Morris and KCP at the three-point line instead of giving it to our best post player, probably in the game, Anthony Davis, and pounding it to him. Some of the players were running the- through the offense through Markeith Morris and Caruso and making them make a play. And... I mean, Caruso is great, and he had a few plays where he really penetrated and got some nice layups. But we kind of got lost in the offense, and sometimes really difficult shot, or even twenty. We had a couple twenty-four second shot clock violations. I think one or two. So, just yeah, going through Danny Green and Marcus Marquise Morris, trying to get them to make a play, didn't make sense. Um, LeBron made a couple threes. And he didn't take a three all game, all all first half. And one of the silliest plays in this game was when LeBron hit that three, and it should have been an and one because Anthony Davis got fouled by Jimmy on like a screen. And there's that huge review that you guys saw, and I don't know how that wasn't a foul. Man, that was clearly, and that could have been a huge momentum play. Of course, it worked out anyways, but that was ridiculous. The rest reviewed it. It was like when the contact happened, not when the whistle happened. That's when they should call a foul. But LeBron made that three, and at least he made that because that gets a guy going. Because there was a play in the first quarter when Tyler Hero made a three, but I believe it was a, st- a shot clock violation. But even though he made the three, I mean, even though it's a shot clock violation, you can't get a guy going like that. Because he's taking like a, like a real NBA three right there. This isn't just, you know, at the end of a quarter, just shooting it, whatever. So even though that three didn't count, that got LeBron's three-point game going. He only made two threes this game, but both one of them was, like, really deep. So he's two for five from three. That was great. 
great three-point game in the second half for LeBron. It really was. Um, you know, Davis, he got his three-point shot going as well. He had that huge dagger at the end. But, yeah, he only made two threes as well. But he was two for four. LeBron was two for five. I like how they weren't just living or dying from the three, you know. KCP took eight threes. Danny Green took six threes. Kyle Kuzma took five threes. Markeith took seven threes. It's not necessary to just take threes. And AD and LeBron know their game, and he got the AD got the three going there, a couple threes, but they know their spots, and they know what they're supposed to do, what shots are good, what shots are bad. And, you know, Bam got in foul trouble in the third quarter. He really did. Um, he got four fouls to three quarters. You know, Anthony Davis only finished this game with two fouls. So he really, you know, he learned from last game not to be a, ba- a Bam out of bio or Nick Lee Jokic. And give him credit because he could easily get a couple touch fouls and he just stayed pat, really. Especially on the screens when he gets screened for a switch onto, like, Jimmy or Tyler Hero. You know, when he's fighting through those screens, sometimes the refs like to call touch fouls there. Um Another thing that was hilarious in the third quarter was, uh, <laughs> excuse me, the third quarter, uh, the fourth quarter interview with Spolstra, and you're interviewing a coach with twelve minutes, twelve minutes to go in the most important game of the season, and he's like smiling the whole time, like this is ridiculous. I want to go talk to my players. <laughs> Thought that was great, and you know I remember Popovich just giving like one word or two word enter- answers in those situations, and same with Steve Kerr, saying I can't believe this is required this interview, but. There's 12 minutes left in NBA Finals. This game, if we lose, it's over. It was just hilarious. Both are just smiling and everything. It's great. <laughs> um, so, oh, I didn't say this. My favorite offensive play was just Anthony Davis's dagger. Um, you know, he has a tendency to make big plays. And he comes through. And that was very reminiscent of the game winner in... Game three of the Lakers Nuggets series, but I always we're always gonna come back to this as Lakers fan, Lakers fans. That Brooklyn Nets shot that he missed in the corner prior to the couple games prior, actually the game prior to the season being suspended in March, where he missed a wide open three on the wing. That will always be the game that Anthony Davis said, "You know what? I'll hit the next one," and he did it again, and he only shot four threes tonight. But, man, that was the biggest shot probably of his career. You can probably argue the Nuggets one might be the biggest, actually. But still, that's a top five shot for his career in the NBA Finals. So give him credit, man. He could easily drove. He had, I think I think Bam was on him, I think. Uh, no, it might have been a Linux. I'm not sure. But, you know, he had the confidence. He took it, and good job by him. So that was my favorite offensive play. My favorite defensive play was... This, this play didn't really matter, but it does in terms of, of it being a statement. You know, Anthony Davis's block with 24 seconds left was huge. Um, Anthony Davis threw the ball out of bounds. The game was out of bounds. The game was like a three-possession game. But Anthony Davis, you know, he said, okay, I screwed up. I was probably fouled. The foul should have been called. But you know what? Then he blocked Jimmy right away. So that was a big defensive play, just a statement. And those are my notes for the game. Pretty much. I mean, now there's a few more here. Yeah, I thought it was this. Uh, oh, yeah. When AD got hurt, AD fell down a few times. Uh, he got hit in the face like twice. Like, Lennox scratched him in the face. Ridiculous. Just. But the one <laughs> where he was on the floor in the fourth quarter was when Jimmy Butler threw down Caruso into Anthony Davis. And I thought he got hit in the misters in the uh, family jewels, but. <laughs> Damn, man. Jimmy was aggressive, and he had some aggressive fouls on LeBron. And so did Jay Crowder. It was just hilarious how Jay Crowder kept trying to get in LeBron's face and stuff. And it's like, man, you're Jay Crowder, dude. You've been traded ten times. Jay Crowder went against LeBron on the Celtics several times in the playoffs. Um, but, man, like, Jay Crowder's terrible. Jay Crowder probably had, like, eight points tonight. Jay Crowder had yeah eight points tonight, two for seven, and all seven of his shots were threes. He's not good. He thinks he's like I don't know, like Stephen Adams or something, or 
some big dude that can get anybody's face. It's just he's an idiot, really. Oh yeah, Tyler Heroes. Tyler Hero made a lot of lucky shots this game. He had a three-point floater that was just a rainbow shot, and then he had a floater from five feet that went sky high over Anthony Davis's arms and went in. I thought he was going to airball it. I don't know how that happened. You know, Tyler Hero is one of the few rookies I've seen that take just terrible shots, and he will launch it no matter what. He shot 18 shots. He shot the most shots in the whole entire game of any player. All right, He shot 18 shots. The next was 16 and 16 from LeBron and AD, 17 from Jimmy Butler. But, man, this guy was 8 for 18 for 44%, and he would just shoot anything. He had 21 points. He missed two free throws. Those free throws that he missed at the, towards the end was critical. But, man, this guy was making absolutely ridiculous shots. And, you know, a big one was that missed layup that Anthony Davis contested that I talked about. Um, so, I just never seen anything like it. Those, that reminded me of Rondo's behind the backboard uh, layup that he had versus the Nuggets. It really did. Um, and then, oh yeah, uh, Tyler Hero got called for a travel in the uh, fourth quarter, and that was the first travel called all series on a guard. And it was hilarious, man. These so many guards are traveling. Jimmy travels a lot. LeBron travels sometimes. I think it was last game where LeBron got two consecutive travels called on him, and that's ridiculous. You don't call travels in LeBron James. But I couldn't believe they called that. So that was a real victory for the officiating on travels. <laughs> um, so our free throw count in the uh, fourth quarter. You know, in the first half, you know, we shot only three free throws, and the Heat shot like 12. However, in the fourth quarter, things flipped. And the Heat shot two free throws. They're one for two, both by Hero, who missed that one I talked about. But the Lakers were 11 for 12. And we were clearly the aggressors. And that's going to get the job done. Um, another funny thing. Not funny, I'm sorry. There were a lot of funny situations this game. But the most ridiculous thing was with a, a minute and 40 seconds left. The Lakers were up by like seven or eight, I think. And the Heat missed a three, and there was wide open rebound. And Rondo and LeBron bumped into each other, which led to a Jay Crowder three. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Not calling out ball, bumping your own teammate for a rebound. And that could have been the game. You know, it didn't really matter in the long term. Lakers won anyways, but that was so ridiculous. Those are critical down the stretch plays, and you're going to bump into your own teammate for a rebound. Let it slip to the opponent. All right, so I'm going to read off the stats. The Los Angeles Lakers, not only did they win, but they led most of this game. It kind of flipped. Uh, I talked about this. The first two games was a wire-to-wire for the Lakers after the first quarter. Last game, it was pretty much a wire-to-wire for the Heat. Second quarter and on. This game, we had the lead probably for 75% of it. Um, we never trailed. In the fourth quarter, uh, the most we trailed by was two in the second half, two or three. And our biggest deficit was five overall in the game, and that came in the second quarter. Um, so, yeah, the biggest lead was for the Heat was five. Ours was nine. And that nine was right at the end of the game, pretty much, right towards the end. The game was tied nine times. There was nine lead changes. The longest run was ten, I believe, by the Heat. But I could be wrong there. Um Points in the paint. The Lakers didn't have a lot of points in the paint tonight. And I was kind of disappointed. And that's mostly because they didn't go to AD really in the paint at all early. Uh, Points in the paint. The Lakers had um, 34 and the Heat had 32. The Lakers usually get between, like, I don't know, 45 to 50. They need to work on that. This game was... Not good for your post post up game, um, but it was a slugfest. You know both teams did not shoot incredibly well. In game two, the Heat shot forty fifty ninety. They were fifty percent from the field, forty percent from three, and ninety percent from the free throw line. Not at all, man. Heat forty two percent from the field. Made it thirty two of seventy five shots, eleven of thirty two from three, 
34%. And 21 to 26 from the free throw line, 80%. The Lakers made their free throws, actually. They only missed three. I think all three were by LeBron James Jr., senior. <laughs> 18 for 21, 85%. We shot better at the free throw line, the three-point line, and the field goal line. Three-pointers, 14 for 39, 36%. Field goal, 35 for 79, 44% overall field goal percentage. The Lakers had 32 rebounds. The Heat had 32 rebounds. That's pretty rare. You know, normally the Lakers have more, but the Lakers had 10 offensive rebounds, and then he had seven. And a lot of those offensive rebounds were just either Anthony Davis coming in there, cleaning it up, or the guards just seeking out the ball like Caruso and Rondo, just finding, getting these long shot three, these off long rebounds off the rim from three-point range. Um, the Lakers had 25 assists. He had 18. Jimmy Butler was not the same Jimmy Butler that was looking to pass only uh, at all. You know, Jimmy Butler only had, I want to say, eight assists this game. Uh, Jimmy had nine assists. Okay, that's still pretty good, but not the 15 assists or 14 that he had the other game. But, yeah, if Jimmy Butler had nine assists, the other Heat players didn't do too much. The rest of the Heat players only had nine assists total. That shouldn't happen. The Lakers had five steals. The Heat had eight steals. The Lakers had four blocks. The Heat had three blocks. The Lakers had 15 turnovers. The Heat had 11. And fast break points. The Lakers had seven. The Heat had four. That's kind of arbitrary. Um, you know, off the rebound, fast break is a lot what the Lakers do. So I don't know if that's completely accurate. Um, oh my god, ESPN.com says the Heat had 15 turnovers, and NBA.com says that he had 11. So I don't know who's right on there. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Let's see who's right. Hmm. The Heat say, I mean, NBA.com says... The Heat had 11. ESPN says they have 11 turnovers. When you go to the box score, it says 15. So that's a glitch. There must be a glitch in ESPN's box scores. I only go there because they have stats that NBA.com doesn't have. And sometimes I go to Basketball Reference for offensive and defensive ratings and other cool stats like per 36 and stuff. But, you know, these are really all the stats that you need. Um, but yeah, so points off turnovers, Lakers had 13, the he had 19 off or off our 15 turnovers. The individual stats, the stats that matter, LeBron James, LeBron James, 38 minutes, 28 points, 50% from the field, 8 for 16, 2 for 5 from 3 for 40%. 10 for 12 from the free throw line, 83%. 12 rebounds, 8 assists, 1 steal, and 6 turnovers for a minus 2. Anthony Davis, 41 points, 41 minutes, sorry, 41 minutes, 22 points, 8 for 16 from the field, 2 for 4 from 3, 4 for 4 from the free throw line, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 turnovers, 1 steal, and here it comes, four blocks. He was a plus 17. Anthony Davis, the best plus minus of anybody in the whole entire game, despite his slow start. Dwight Howard. They started Markeith in the second half. And I'm very interested to see whether or not the Lakers decide to start Markeith in next game because... Dwight does get rebounds. Tonight he only had two rebounds in seven minutes. But he, he just can't keep up with Bam. Bam's too quick. Dwight's not really there. So it looks like JaVale and Dwight could be eliminated from this series. And I kind of feel bad for them because they're both pretty good players. They really are. It's just the way the NBA has changed for them. Not good. And Dwight is more mobile than JaVale and Dwight can play longer because reveals asthma. But yeah, Dwight only seven minutes. Took only one shot. 
uh, he got fouled um, on a shot, but they counted it for free throws. They didn't count it for free throws for some reason. Um, Dwight, two rebounds, two, two turnovers. One of those rebounds was offensive, an offensive rebound. Danny Green. Some of his misses were horrendous. They really were. Danny Green had 20 points. 20 minutes. I'm sorry, I keep doing this. 20 minutes, 10 points, 4 for 8 from the field, 2 for 6 from 3, 2 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 turnover, 2 steals. So I think he is still a little bit hurt. Uh, But he made up for it tonight. And he was great. You know, a lot of our role players played really well. Our main role players really are Danny, KCP, Kuzma, Rondo, and Caruso. If you want to throw in Marquis, if you can. But those five guys, or I guess six guys, Danny, KCP, Kuzma, Rondo, Caruso, Marquis, those five guys, six guys, combined for, let's see, they're, 52 points. That's pretty good. If you can get 50 points out of your players that aren't your two stars, you're set up for a dub. And they came to play. You know, Rondo, he'd had a tough shooting night for sure. Um, He was one for seven. He had a couple good layup looks, and he just missed them. And he got fouled a few times, but they weren't called at all. He was on the floor a few times. You know, Rondo had two points, but he had seven rebounds and five assists. And the big thing was he had two offensive rebounds. And those two were huge. The one at the end was huge. And Rondo only one turnover. He had a steal. Rondo was a plus eight. But yeah, if you can get 52 points every night out of your bench, the last game the bench was good as well. Um, you're going to win. That's just as simple as it, as it is. You know, the stat that the Lakers need 60 points from their two bigs to win, I don't think that's true. You know, last game, the Lakers had a chance, and Morris and Kuzma combined for 40 points. <laughs> so, yeah, KCP played really well. 31 minutes, 15 points, 6 for 12 from the field, 3 for 8 from 3, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 turnover. He had that huge layup at the end. And when KCB gets in the lane, he has this cool tendency to, like, kind of curl up the ball in his hand and palm it and then kind of just, like, flick it in real fast. I don't know. (laughs) But, yeah. KCP's been really well. He's been probably the most consistent role player of anybody in the playoffs for the Lakers. I mean, Danny Green, no. Rondo, you could say, but, you know, he was obviously only in uh, around... Uh, he was only in the final three rounds. Um, Kuzma, but not really. Morris, not at all. But yeah, I'd say KCP for sure. Um, Kyle Kuzma, 18 minutes, 9 points, 3 for 6 from the field, 2 for 5 from 3, 1 for 2 from the free throw line, 2 rebounds, 1 turnover. Rondo. 28 minutes, 2 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 turnover, 1 steal, plus 8. Caruso, 22 minutes, 7 points, 3 for 5 from the field, 2 rebounds, 1 turnover, minus 5. Caruso had a couple flops this game, but he really, really tries on defense to stay in front of these big guards like Jimmy and stuff. Um, but yeah, man, Caruso has probably been the most improved player of anybody I've seen in a while. In terms of coming from nowhere, starting in the G League. Um, and this experience is huge. You know, I listen to Bill Simmons' podcast, and he says he'd rather have the Celtics roster, the Young Bloods, than the Heat, young, the Lakers' Young Bloods. Um, but he was talking about this when they had Brandon Ingram and Lonzo and Kuzma. And he said only because the Celtics have been in the playoffs every year with these players like Jalen Tatum and uh, Marcus uh, Smart, and they have so much playoff experience. And the reps that Caruso is getting in these playoffs are really huge. They really are. Um, so I love to see he's taking advantage of it. Marquise Morris, 9 points, 2 for 8 from the field in 30 minutes. 
Marquise Morris is going to keep playing 30 minutes, and you're going to play him in crunch time. He better play well. Because offensively, he was okay. Two for eight, nine points. Two for seven from three. He made all three of his free throws when he was fouled in the three-point attempt. Um, but still, man, it's just funny to me how you can play a guy who was waived by a team in crunch minutes. And, you know, Jay Crowder has that as well. You know, the Heat, uh, the Grizzlies traded Jay Crowder um, in the Winslow trade, the Justice Winslow trade. But um, Jay Crowder is also kind of irrelevant. It's just funny, man. There, there's so many other mobile bigs that we could have instead, and we're sticking with Marquise Morris. And Marquise Morris is going to shoot, man. He's going to launch seven threes. He took the second most threes of anybody in the Lakers. Um, you give it to him, man. He's like J.R. Smith. Just, he's gone. <laughs> So that's the Lakers' individual stats. The Heat. Jimmy Butler. 43 minutes. 22 points. 8 for 17 from the field. 6 for 7 from the free throw line. 10 rebounds. 9 assists. 3 turnovers. 3 steals. And 1 block. He was a minus 11. Second worst plus minus in the game. Jay Crowder. 34 minutes. 8 points. 2 for 7 from the field. All those shots were threes. Two for two from the free throw line, seven rebounds, two assists, one steal, one block. He had one big block on, I think it was AD. That block was huge. No, I, and it might have been on LeBron, but the block that Jay Crowder was crazy. He just got his hand in there. That was awesome. That was the only good play he had all night. <laughs> Bam. 33 minutes. This is after me talking cra- trash about Jay Crowder. But that block was really nice. Uh, Bam out of bio. Wasn't great, man. 33 minutes, 15 points, 6 for 8 from the field. 7 rebounds, 1 assist, 3 turnovers, 4 fouls. You know, there's no time to have a game that's, let me let me get back into a game, let me just work myself in. There's no time for that. Pin on bio needs more than 0 blocks. He needs more than 33 minutes and only 8 shots. He had three turnovers a night. He only had seven rebounds. If the Heat are going to win, they need Bam to get 25 and 12 and three blocks. 15 and seven is not going get, to get it done at all. And he's fucking slide his feet because four fouls is not where it's at. Excuse my language, sorry. Duncan Robinson, 32 minutes, 17 points, four for seven from the field. He only took seven shots. He was fouled, though, a couple times on three-point attempts. Three for six from three. But, yeah, Duncan Robinson started out terrible this series, and this is solid. Uh, 17 points. Six for six from the line. One rebound, three assists, one turnover, one steal, one block for Duncan Robinson. I don't even remember Duncan Robinson's block. But, yeah, it is what it is. One block for Duncan Robinson. Uh, Tyler Hero, 37 minutes, 21 points. Eight for 18 from the field. Once again, most shots in the game of anybody, three for seven from three. If you told me, and I said this last game, maybe it was two games ago, if you told me that Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero would combine for six for 13 from three, I'd be like, you're crazy. These guys are going to take way more than 13 threes and make more than six. That's it. The other game, they were like 3 for 20, I think. Last game or the game before that. Um, but yeah, these guys need to shoot threes at a bigger clip than 6 or 7. These guys are sharpshooters, man. And if they're going to... One guy played 37 minutes, the other guy played 32 minutes. I don't know, man. Tyler Hero, 21 points, 8 for 18, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 turnovers, 1 steal. Minus 13, worst plus minus. Again. For the Heat. Kelly Linick did not play like the Kelly Linick we know. You know, it's obvious that Bam would take his minutes. But I didn't think Bam would take away his offense. 12 minutes for Kelly, 4 points, 1 for 4 from the field, 2 rebounds, 1 turnover. Minus 7. Kendrick Nunn, probably the worst player in the game tonight. 25 minutes, 6 points, 2 for 11 from the field. Two for six from three. His only two makes were those threes. Four rebounds. One foul. Andre Iguodala. Man, this guy's thinking he can play defense like it's 2014. 20 minutes, three points. One of three from the field. One rebound. One steal. Three fouls. 
And I'm so happy we didn't see Solomon Hill tonight, the worst player in the league. <laughs> didn't see Myers Leonard. I just don't want to see Solomon Hill. Just seeing him pisses me off. It really does. So those are the stats, man. Lakers got to get this dub. You know, it's not, it, the Heat were in a position to say, hey, if we can tie this up 2-2, two, two, we have two days off, get Bam really good, feeling better, probably 5% chance Gordon Rogers will come back with these two days, off, two days off. But they screwed up, and now we have the two days off. It's working in our favor. We can rest knowing that the Heat have to win three straight games, which has never happened in NBA Finals history besides the Cavs in 2016. Lakers got this. There's no reason we should lose this series, and it does feel like the finals now. I'm so proud because I remember there's this play where LeBron was super pissed off and he threw the ball on the ground, and you know what? They won it still. And last game when LeBron stormed off the court before the buzzer even went off, um, just things change. It flipped. We closed it. All right, thanks so much for listening. I'm Charles Ryan, KB24 status or yours truly the biggest Lakers fan in the world, please comment, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, like the video if you want. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, this is one of the final few podcasts of the season. And it'll probably be out till who knows. Who knows when the season's going to start up again. Probably January, February, or March. Um, but, yeah, man. I'll do some evaluations, like I said. But these are the last few, so I want to make them really good, really detailed, have the montages looking good, all that. All right, thanks for living, listening, take care, and go Lakers. I'll talk to you guys on Friday. Peace.